Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. Today is April 16th of 2019, and this is episode number 25 titled Ending the Feast or Famine Cycle with Matt Davies, who I'm super excited to have on our show today. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Oval Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas, and with me as always is the other Matt, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. What's going on, Matt? Oh, not much. I'm, uh, I'm pretty curious about what uh, other Matt has to say today. Matt and other Matt. <laughs> I wish your name was Pete so we could have Pete and repeat. That would be better. Mm. But what are you going to do? Anyways, we're excited to have Matt Davies here. Him and I have been uh, buddies for a long time on Facebook, and uh, he's one of my favorite people to chat with. And today we have a really great reason to be chatting because he is launching something absolutely spectacular that is going to help you uh, in the feast or famine sales cycle. So that's what we're here to talk about today. So for those of you that don't know Matt Davies, Matt, hello, good morning. Why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Good afternoon. Um, I'm Matt Davies or other Matt or whichever nickname you want to give me, presuming it's a nice one. Um, I'm 35 from the UK, uh, not single. <laughs> I've been involved in web design since the late 90s. Um, my first website was on GeoCities, if you guys nice. remember GeoCities. Mine too. Um, like there was a guy who got really angry at me because um, if you remember back in GeoCities, you had different areas you could put your websites and I put mine into one that it wasn't supposed to be. It was kind of all like, this is the topic. And I just went in and just said, here's my page about you know nonsense. It was just my life. And he got really mad. And I got this strange email from someone saying, that I've done things wrong. Um, and then basically started building websites in 2000 um, using Dreamweaver. Um, built a first site for a client back then, which was uh, my aunt and uncle who had a holiday place, like a B&B type holiday place. Um, and essentially, ever since then, I've been building websites and started made agency in 2006. So um, WordPress since mid-2003. So it's been, it's been a long time. Nice. Walked away from the B2 uh, platform. <clears throat> and you have an awesome agency name too. <laughs> yeah, my agency is called Anti Sushi. Um, it's a long story. Do you, do, you, do you want me to go into it? I don't know if you can do the brief version uh because i know the story yeah. do, do a do an abbreviated version it's good okay um well the agency was named in 2009 when it officially well, 2000, late 2008 early 2009 when it officially was named uh, previous to that we had uh, different boring names um but the name itself came from a time in summer 2008 i'd been dating a girl for two or three months uh, we were going out to see jimmy carr in brighton a comedian and we went to a sushi restaurant before the show. And <laughs> I, for whatever reason, I was sat down having dinner with this gal and she stood up in the restaurant and started using all sorts of words, which we're not going to say on this show. Um, I was very confused. I had everybody, 60, 70 people in a restaurant staring at me. Um, I began still, I still to this day don't actually really know what, what it's all about, but there was all sorts of swearing going on. Um, and basically at the moment of the story there was, uh, I kind of walked out, said, here's the tickets, enjoy the show. Never saw her again. And on the way home to one of my friends, I was telling a story to, um, I said, I was really anti sushi now. And when I came to name the business, uh, I don't like silly, uh, so I don't like sort of traditional names. I like things to be silly that stick in someone's head for a story. Um, and so that I was like, yeah, that'll do. Limited company done. <laughs> that's sort of what it's been ever since. And the story, I mean, it's it's funny now. It was it was quite hurtful at the time. But, um, you know, it's uh, it, it made a story that's worth telling. So Have you ate sushi since that? Oh, since I then? love sushi. Uh, oh. I'm completely not against sushi at all. <laughs> In, in our first year of trading, I had, I think, 10 or 15 calls asking if they could book a table because they genuinely thought we were a sushi restaurant and not a web design business. <laughs> so. Nice. You should have just took their money. <laughs> Told them there was a deposit. And uh, Yell.com Yell had us listed as Auntie's Sushi for a while as well. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, that is awesome. All right, well, let's get into the uh, the topic at hand today. So the problem that we're talking about is this feast or famine sales cycle, which is something that I go through all the time. In fact, I've shared um, my my 
my sales dashboard with you, which will show one month a lot of sales and then the next month really low and up or down, up and down, up and down. And I get stuck in this cycle where one month I'm busy uh, out selling stuff and I have a great sales month. And the next month uh, I'm busy working and can't sell anything. So talk to us about that problem. Absolutely. So it's something that tends to creep up on us. Um, you know, we, whether we're starting a business out from scratch, whether we've been in business a long time, one of the things that can happen to us is we can have a really big month where we go out all out on sales. And then that second month that happens, we're delivering projects. And obviously, as you guys know, not all of our clients ever get back to us on time. So typically some of these projects will go even longer, which makes this whole thing even worse. But if we just take month one, month two, We've got all our sales in, so we've got a lovely upwards line on our graph. The second month, we're now busy delivering on all of these projects. You've probably oversold yourself. I mean, I know certain people who work evenings and weekends. Not that <laughs> but when you know when when you when you've got that extra capacity, you have a mindset where you're more than happy to take on perhaps too many jobs because you want to obviously fill up your fill up your schedule. Now it gets to month two, you spent all of that time delivering work. Month three comes around, you haven't got any you haven't got any new leads because you've just spent month two working. So month three, you're now rushing out, panicking, you need to get more jobs in, and you're going to do the same thing you did in month one again. And as this goes over time, what can happen is your your quality of the leads you start accepting can go down because you become more desperate for money because you're trying to grow your business. And you know, this whole thing, we, we define it as like a sales roller coaster because if you look at the graph that Kyle posted, it's up, down, up, down, up, down. Uh, and, and obviously, it's, it's a ride that you don't want to be on because at the end of the day, although Kyle, um, I will say, has a graph that stands out from most of the ones I've seen because he graphed so much, it's still got a continual upwards line over time. But if he was able to change that process, he could probably give himself a bit of a break sometimes in the evenings and weekends. Yeah. And you're right about the taking on projects that you might not want to, because you get to that panic, like, oh shit, now I got to, now I need to go out and sell stuff. So I'm going to take on whatever. And then you get to where you're super busy, but not profitable. You know, you're taking on a really crappy job. So it's not, it's not certainly helpful, but yeah, so and, and, how does I mean, that, how do you scale that too? We, we, we you, you don't, I mean, um, it's it, your your the only way you scale it is by making another you. So if you've got a duplication machine in your in your office, then that's going to work really well. But um, essentially, unless you have a team in that situation, you're never going to scale things. Um, and, and and essentially, you're going to be stuck in the same place over and again, uh, over and over again. Maybe slightly higher bank balance, maybe a slightly lower bank balance, but your your effectiveness is limited by the availability of you. Yeah. And I, I mean, I definitely see that too. And especially, you know, when you're, I think this problem is even uh, more prevalent when you, when you are by yourself, you know, because it's just you doing, wearing all of these hats, which is a, a different, difficult thing to do. And like you said, you know, that leads to working late, working early, working weekends, working all the time. And uh, something that I think everybody ends up hitting at some point in this at a different maybe at a different level is some sort of burnout, you know, because it takes a toll on, on your mental health eventually. Yeah. And you're not, um, you're not like working on the jobs that you necessarily want to as well, which, I mean, that just compounds the, uh, the burnout issue. It, it does. I mean, if, if we look at um, mental health, which is obviously a, it's a massive topic. I mean, um, I don't know what it's like in America for you guys, but it's the biggest killer of men under the age of 50 in the UK. Um, you know, bad, 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 bad mental health and essentially leading to, to things like suicide, which obviously, as I mean, is, is the biggest killer. But it's so easy to get trapped in these cycles. And when we when we're trapped either working with clients we don't want to work with and having communication with, you know, you know what it's like with a bad client. They can say something that really ruins your day or your week or your mind. Um, and when you're when that's compounded with working continuously, um, either struggling to find leads, struggling to find good quality work, uh, and just struggling with projects you don't want to do, the mental health situation it puts you in is is really tough. And Kyle touched on it as well by saying when you're working alone, one of the things that can happen is you can it, things can sort of close in around you, and you can I mean it it, it is obviously a, you know a, a side of depression where things can close around you. And what you can find is you can find yourself moving away from the normal social circles you're in. Uh, we're extremely lucky that we've got groups like yours and other, and, and other groups on Facebook where we can actually come and, and sort of congregate. But there's so many web developers or marketers who are in this world who don't have access to Facebook or who aren't aware of these groups. And they're the people who are really going to suffer the most from that kind of thing. 
Yeah. And I mean, there's even, you know, there's, there's these groups that help so much. And, and even now I found, you know, I've been involved in, in a couple of years now, most of my good friends are people inside these groups, which I think is okay. You know, I, I spend a lot of time here in front of the computer, but at least I have somebody, you know, me and Matt talk a lot, uh, Matt Siebert talk a lot, uh, on the phone and stuff like that, which, which is a little bit different than doing online, but even having the, the people online is, is a super, uh, super helpful. So we've kind of talked about this problem, and I think everybody in here is probably uh, identifying pretty well with this. I, I feel like I know our group pretty well, and I think a lot of us have these same struggles. But why why you're here isn't necessarily to tell us what's wrong with us. you got to help us fix this problem. So what are some of the fixes for being stuck on this roller coaster? I mean, there's... I'd give you probably two or three of them. Um, one is looking at ways we can generate recurring income. So with our business, obviously care plans is an effective way of doing so if that's something you offer. Um, any kind of marketing services. What you want to try and find are productized services that don't take all of, don't take up all of your time, are valuable to your clients, and also deliver a reasonable amount of revenue to your business. Uh, if it's something that you can productize and give to someone else to outsource, that's even better as well. Um, the biggest one for me is setting up sales funnels. Um, and so a sales funnel on the website uh, allows me to set something up once. I can drive traffic to it. And then I can take, uh, take my leads through a sales funnel. So they go from maybe the, the sort of not being aware of the problem to being aware of the problem to understanding what the problem is and the solution. And then obviously that's the solution. We so hopefully at the end of the day, we overtake them to making it, having a call with us and buying something directly. Um, and I can do that on repeat. It's a repeatable process. So that allows me not to have to worry about not having leads coming in because that's, that's going on all the time I'm working. Uh, another way would be, as you say, scaling up would be just obviously to, to get someone else on board on your projects anyway. Um, defining your processes and then being able to say to someone, look, I have a lot of work on at the moment. I need you to assist me. But that will rely on you having some additional funds available to obviously recruit that person. So, you know, if you're certainly in the early times, perhaps you haven't got lots of money in your business that you want to spend on outsourcing. Yeah, and outsourcing is another job in itself too, which I mean, that is a solution, but also you're you're creating more work. It's not like you just all of a sudden magically push work and somebody else does it. There's a lot of like managing that goes on with that too, you know. So um so I think the the sales funnel is super interesting and I think it's something a lot of us push to clients and aren't as good about doing it for ourselves, you know. So I did a little poll in the group uh yesterday. Um, and so I asked people, uh, how many of you offer a lead magnet or have a funnel in place on your own agency website? Um, there was probably close to, I'm going to have to do math here, close to 50 or so people who answered and 32 of those 50 or so said no, but they want to. So, you know, just by those numbers alone, you can already look and see that this is something that people realize that they need to put in place, but it's difficult to do for yourself. So why do you think people struggle a lot of these people I would imagine are people that could put these systems into place for their clients, no problem, but have a problem doing it for themselves. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's, if you've heard of kind of the cobbler's shoes analogy, where you know, especially they have the cobbler's shoes and then the, the cobbler's children's shoes where um, they're great at making shoes for everyone else. But when it comes to say themselves or their own family, uh, maybe their shoes are worn out. It's very similar when you're, when you're running a business and particularly if we're talking say about the sort of feast famine cycle as well, your focus is on generating revenue for your business. It's as simple as that. And the key mindset when we start our web design or marketing company is doing client work, which generates revenue. It's a very simple equation. Do client work, get revenue, and then obviously do more client work, get more revenue. Now, by doing that, that's great. We do the work. But the, the thing we neglect, and I think all of us can probably say at least one point in the lives of our web design agencies or marketing agencies, wherever the, whatever stage you're at, all of us have neglected our website at some point. Um, I, I have done, I've, I've left mine for a few years on really outdated sort of content. And, and that's just because I was stuck at the time working on sort of uh, trying to get new leads, trying to get new business, but getting stuck in a feast famine cycle. And it takes that time to get out of it, to understand that now we need to spend this time building our business and actually giving ourselves a break and a chance to generate long-term revenue. Yeah. And like you said, I think part of the biggest thing is just the time, like building out some sort of funnel takes a lot of time. You have, 
you need to figure out some sort of landing page. You've got to figure out something to give people. You got to set up a bunch of, uh, you got to set up some way to deliver that. You got to set up a nurturing email sequence. You have to have some kind of end goal in mind that you're actually pushing people to. And you're just talking about a lot of time investment um, that goes into that. And I think when we're stuck on this roller coasters, you know, it, it's hard to make the time for that. So I think this is why, uh, what you're here today promoting and why you're here is going to be so awesome for all of us. So uh, why don't you start telling us about how you've come to a solution to this problem? Sure. I mean, if, if I can tell you a bit more um, about sort of the, my background from that, um, it's it's slightly sadder. And um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you anyway, but just forgive me if it chokes me up slightly. So my grandmother passed away in 2008 from motor neurons disease. Um, she told my family on Christmas Day 2006. So you imagine you're sitting around for Christmas. My grand comes in. Oh, yeah, I've got motor neurons disease. Um, as, a, as a guy then, I would have been, what, 23? I didn't really know what motor neurons disease was, um, as most of us. As something doesn't affect our immediate family, we don't really think about it. But um, that essentially... That was what she had, um, and she moved in with my family six months later, and she passed away a year and a half after that. Uh, as someone who was the biggest influence in my life, uh, it really affected me a lot more than I knew. Um, I carried on with my life, but slowly, um, you, you, I mean, you'll see from my Facebook profile picture, for example, is about 10 years old. I have a little bit more chub in these cheeks right now. Me too. Um, <laughs> you'll you see uh, over time, um, I became more withdrawn. I put on a bit more weight. And essentially, it affected my business massively. And this is all of the things we talk about with the feast, famine, and roller coaster. I literally went through these between 2008 and 2013. It was a long time, a really, really tough time. Uh, and in 2013, I reached a point where I almost wanted not to be here anymore. And that's that's quite hard to say still. Um, thankfully, through the NHS, um, the English Health Service, um, I went and saw a therapist, went through some you know, cognitive behavioral stuff, um, was able to take a step back, look at where I was and start to sort of rebuild my life. Um, and over the last six years, I've really, really, really enjoyed having a better understanding and angle on what I'm doing. So that was really my that, that, that's kind of my reason for it and my understanding of it. And I see it happen daily to other people in our groups, um, not in our groups, people I'm, you know, people I'm friends with away from Facebook and that sort of thing. Uh, and so it led to me earlier this year thinking, what can I do that I have knowledge of that can help anyone else who I know or is in our industry? Um, because mental health, as, as you can hear from, from that story there, is a massive, massive thing to me. I, like, I want everyone to have great mental health and to love their business. And I wanted to know what you know, what can we do, and so that's kind of where where we started. <laughs> Give me a sec. I just need to. <laughs> no, I understand. Not a problem. I think mm. understanding that why is so important, and especially these are the types of things that really motivate you to change your business. Um, and and probably your story is not that uncommon to anybody in here that can relate with something like that. Maybe not directly with themselves, but with somebody close. You know. So I think that's. You know, I, I applaud you for coming on here and, and telling us that story because I think it's I think it's important for everybody to hear. And I, I'm married to a mental health professional, so she's a counselor. Uh, she helps people with these kinds of problems all the time. Uh, and it's not something I've struggled with personally. So before I was around her, it's kind of like these problems didn't exist. Like I knew they were out there or something, but they weren't real, you know. And I think it's just so important for people to understand that this is this is just being a human being. We all kind of go through these things, you know, so talking about them is the most important thing for sure. Just um, make sure you know there's other people going through the same things you are uh, and, and that everybody goes through that at some point. That's exactly. I mean, um, so what, what we what we did earlier this year was um, we well, I say I say we when I say we um, that's myself, and my girlfriend, Melissa uh, or Mel. Um, so she sat down and listened to me um, talking about what can we do. And I said, I want to help people to avoid the feast and famine cycle. I want to help them to get away from the sales roller coaster. I want them to be able to generate leads and to have time like in their lives. So whether they use that time to spend with their family, whether they use it to spend with their friends, whether they stay up all night and the weekends working like Kyle, um, whatever they want to do, they have the flexibility to have more time in their life because we never have enough time. Like it's 
every second that we spent talking, those seconds are time that we never get back. And it's, it's, a, it's, you know, when you, when you sit down and really look at it, it's about how can I effectively use my time to one, have a great business to have a great life. That's, that's literally, you know, what you want to do with your life and obviously all our goals. So we sat down and we said, right, we want to get marketing funnels in the hands of everyone. We know it can take, you know, two, three, four, five days to build a marketing funnel, like you said, to research it, to, to put everything together. Let's sell a pre-built marketing funnel and let's give that to people as cheaply as we possibly can so that they can get it set up. And my goal was that anyone can set something up inside an hour. Uh, and that's what Funnel Packs is. Yes. And I'm super excited about this because, uh, you know, I, I, I understand funnels. I get the concept. I've put some stuff into place. I went through Dave's fantastic No Fear Funnels course, and but I still have that problem of like actually um, implementing it for myself fully. So my biggest problem is, uh, you know, I, I can make the 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 lead conversion engine so I can put up a landing page and have have it all connected to my mail and you know give people a PDF and all that kind of stuff and all that works good. And then there's this big gap in between. Uh, where you need to like nurture these leads and turn these leads into customers, which I'm not so good at. So I kind of just skip. And then uh, the end when I want them to buy something like I know how to set that up, but uh, putting that all together <clears throat> can be a little bit difficult. And I think I'm not alone in that. Uh, you know, when you look at the poll in our group where people say uh, they don't have a funnel in place, but they want one. So now there's a, there's almost no excuse not to have one. So tell us uh, what's inside of a funnel pack. Oh, sure. Okay. So the funnel pack, like I said, the, the entire idea of it, it's, it's, it's entirely pre-built so that you can set this up on your website inside an hour. One thing I'll just say as I go through it is the first time, you would say, if you, if you want to, to be involved the first time you touch it, I want you to set everything up on your website in less than an hour and then go back and season it to taste. Because if you don't, it will be another thing you buy and you say, I'm going to do tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes along, a client calls you up, time drifts away again and then you move on and we will we will do that so the first thing you do is you set it up so that you don't have an action killing your business inside the funnel pack we have a lead magnet so it's a professionally designed lead magnet really cool with this and i'll happily tell you i spent ages trying to find a way that we could give people a lead magnet to edit using free software um, so we have it in indesign if you've got a print background that's cool We've also got it in Google Slides, which you don't imagine that you can make a lead magnet in Google Slides, but it's insanely easy. And Google's Slides tool has some really cool additional stuff in there. Um, so you've got a lead magnet you can edit. You've got all of the nurture emails. You've got a welcome email, a series of nurture emails, a call to action email, a landing page, a thank you page, videos tying everything together. Um, videos showing you how to set everything up on your website. It's for Elementor and Beaver Builder. So they both exist as well. Um, I, I recorded a video of me adding all of the emails into MailChimp. Um, as you guys may know, if you have different email systems, and I think you've, you've experienced Kyle, MailChimp's not the fastest system to use. No, it's not. <laughs> or the best. No. Um, so I, I've recorded using the most difficult tool. But again, the most important thing was I wanted to use free tools wherever possible just to prove it's possible and that money isn't an issue. Um, so there's no ongoing cost if you use MailChimp. You, you can use a free MailChimp account. You can use a free MailerLite account. Highly recommend you choose that over MailChimp because it's much better in terms of uh, speed and efficiency. And I think the back end's a bit more, uh, a bit but easier to understand. It's a bit more sort of user friendly uh, when we're setting up a marketing funnel. Um, and like I said, all of that is all enclosed um, and, and that's kind of what we sell. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything else I can explain for you. <laughs> no, no. I think, I mean, the, the point is this is the entire funnel from yeah. start to finish, everything you need for your website, the lead magnet, all the emails, the copies written for you. Uh, I will say there's a, uh, a, a proper English version and, and American slang version because uh, <laughs> that's just who Matt Davies is. Um, so all of that's completely done for you, which is pretty amazing to just be able to receive this package and have everything you need and no more excuses to not have a funnel on your website. So uh, when you talk about the lead magnet and you talk about these, it's funnel packs, plural. So I imagine there's more than one pack here. So why don't you tell us about the different kinds of things you're offering now and, and what you kind of have planned in the future? 
Absolutely. So um, we've got two available at the start. So there's one for web design, which really focuses around uh, new websites or website redesigns. Uh, my favorite one is the website audit pack. And that's purely because we can sell probably six or seven different services from that. Um, the way that we primed the lead magnet and the nurture emails, you, you've got your client thinking about a number of different services that you, you know, a number of different sort of features of their website and they can go away. There's all action points. So they're actually going to be going away and thinking about this. We've got action points and tips in our, in our guide and our emails. Um, but we want them to be thinking about things that we can actually sell them things like a, a new website. We can sell them conversion optimization. We can sell them a speed optimization service. We can sell them SEO. We can sell them care plans. Um, then we can, and then there's uh, copywriting. <laughs> there's lots of different options just from that one pack. Um, and the website audit pack in particular, the way that I wanted to set this out was the way that I used to sell website audits. I don't believe that either cold emailing a website audit to someone or just having a form on your website saying, I'll fill out a website audit for you. I don't think that's an effective way of doing business because you're not qualifying that lead before you're going out and spending your hard-earned time and your precious time doing work for them. Uh, whether you know you're you're delivering a report or whether you're um, just hoping to send a report and you know throwing lots of, uh, of, of pins at the wall and hoping something sticks to it. Um, so what I want people to do is to actually bring their lead through a sequence and then at the end of it, either sell an audit or offer an audit uh, for free, whichever way suits you better. Uh, and we've given the entire plan, including um, methods of methods that you can sell. So I've I've, I've written out how I used to sell them, uh, which was for four hundred ninety nine dollars for a full audit and you get two hours of my time. Uh, and that was basically for leads that have been uh, gone through our system. Yeah. And that's one of those things. Like if you try to do that with cold outreach, you never know what, what part of their website cycle these business owners are in or whoever's running this, this, um, this website, because you got to hit them at the right time. Now, when you can bring traffic in and they opt in for something like this, you know, you're at least somewhat within that window of time that you can sell them something, you know? So I think it's a much, a much better plan. So you said you have the, uh, the website design funnel pack and the website audit funnel pack available. Now I just mm -hmm. put links to both of those inside the chat here. Um, so everybody can check those out, but I know you have a lot more planned on the way. So why don't you tell us about some of those? Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't want to take up too, too much time talking about just those two. Um, and, and obviously to bore anyone to death with my enthusiasm about website audits. Uh, so we, we also have... Um, We're all nerds here. It's okay. <laughs> I, I know that some people may not have as much enthusiasm for an audit as I might. Well, um, then they can so piss off. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, just, just as ideas, we've got um, we've got things like SEO, uh, pay per click, copywriting. Um, I mean, thinking along with, uh, basically any service that digital agencies offer. Uh, there's se seventeen I've listed out at the moment. Um, now, even as obscure as things like brand identity and graphic design. Um, the graphic design one, uh, there will be an interesting final to have, um, but it's, it's all about the type of angle. Um, but most importantly, we are 100% open to listening to what people want as well. So we have a founder's offer. Um, this is the kind of the, the, the higher priced offer as such, but the, the final packs are on the website are $97. Um, Kyle does have a coupon as well for 10% off uh, for the next two weeks. Um, but basically, the, 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 their original price was $125. Kyle wanted me to sell it for more than that <laughs> when we first spoke. Um, I said, no, I'm going to sell them for $97. Um, but as I say, if we have a pack of 10 as a founder's offer. And I wanted to do this so that it was the, the lowest price I could possibly get to whilst making sure that everyone had a good, you know, has had sort of something great from the deal. Uh, so that that's 10 packs for $697, which you can get 10% off still. Uh, it's your choice of 10 packs as well. So we're not forcing you to take the first 10 that we pick. Um, Oliver Martin, who had a little bit of behind the scenes uh, help with this, he told me that he wanted to be able to choose 10. So two weeks ago, he made me have to rebuild the entire thing we were doing. <laughs> to allow for people to choose Way to go, Oliver. Yeah, thanks, Oliver. Uh, so so that, that contributed to, to a few sleepless nights. But um, basically, we allow people to choose 10 final packs. And I think that's really important. And the way, he, the way he said it and the way we've embraced it is allowing people to choose what suits their business. So there's a lot of different topics. There's 17 at this point in time that are planned to release. And they'll release every one to two weeks as we move forwards. Um, so you get your 10, 10 final packs. You're also going to get a founder's T-shirt. We're making a founder's T-shirt for founder members. I'm wearing uh, one of the older style hoodies at the moment. It hasn't got the white inside the F, but 
Um, I, I just I thought I'd wear it today. Um, but so you, we'll send that anywhere in the world. Um, and we're going to give you 10% off uh, for life from anything else we release. And in terms of phase two, so after phase one, which is all stuff for your website, our phase two plans are to be able to offer funnel packs that you can sell directly to clients. So we were thinking we'd try and look at the top 10 client niches and then you can buy something from us, maybe a slightly higher price point, like maybe $50 more for them just because it's a little bit more involved with making it just for your clients. Um, but you can take it, edit it, sell it to your client in a day and, and, and charge them, you know, one, two, three thousand dollars whatever, whatever suits your price point, your, your, uh, your industry and your location. So there's a lot you're, of stuff coming. <laughs> you're, you're getting some good feedback in the group. And I will say, I think Dave Foy is a fan of yours because he keeps <laughs> going on and on about how much, uh, how, how important you've been to his group. And I can attest being inside the No Fear Funnels group. Uh, uh, I think everybody gets a ton of value from you and, and appreciates that. I did want to ask you, um, who was your first customer for Funnel Packs? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. <laughs> I mean, I think he might have just asked me that question just so he could get his answer. So Kyle forced me on the 21st of March, 2019. Um, I didn't have the back end set up, but he forced me to allow him to purchase uh, funnel packs. So he he uh, he made a purchase. I had to set him up in Stripe and send him an invoice. Uh, but Kyle was our first customer. Um, very right. great for it too. I, I am super excited about this. So I want to make sure everybody knew who was, who was the king around here. I'm the first customer. Okay. So you did say uh, you are offering a, uh, a discount coupon code for our listeners for the next two weeks. So I bet everybody wants to know what that is. It is the words, the admin bar, all lowercase, all one word, the admin bar. Uh, and you can get 10% off of the already low introductory rates. So basically, if you wanted to just give this a shot, you could spend around $70, 80 bucks, something like that, have an entire marketing funnel, sales funnel on your website in the next hour. So for the, the people in the group, the, the now 32 people that said that they'd like to have a funnel on their website, there's there's almost no excuse to have this uh, up and running this afternoon. Literally this afternoon, you can have a sales funnel working on your website, which is super exciting. And to add to that, um, I just want to read one of Dave's uh, comments here that, that definitely backs this up, saying that uh, Matt is the secret sauce in my No Fear Funnel support team and community. His practical real-world experience of creating funnels that actually convert is uh, astounding. I mean, damn. <laughs> Coming from Dave Foy, that's not bad. It's it's hard for me to listen to praise sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's a lot of it going on praise. in the uh, the comments thank right you. now. I, I'm purposely not watching it at the moment, but thank you. We do have a question here. Some uh, Maria is asking: Can we use one funnel pack on unlimited websites, or is it considered one license for for using it? So the way that we're going to go about this is really really simple. Um, if you're using it on your own websites. I don't mind what you do with it. Mel doesn't mind what you do with it. Um, so if you're a web designer who may operate, let's say, for example, I, mean, I think personally, I've done this before. You're insane if you're trying to have lots of different websites for your business. But if it works for you, I love you. Um, let's say you've got your own web design company. Maybe you've got a, a, a geo-targeted domain as well. And, and then you, know, you run another agency with someone else as a partnership more than happy if you want to put the same funnel on all three of those you're more than welcome um what we don't want you to do is obviously to sell it to someone else <laughs> you know, it's obviously it's, it's our property but for the phase two stuff for the for the ones for your clients you're welcome to buy that once and sell it to 50 clients um, i mean that's, that, not a at all. that's all just in the spirit of wordpress right there i think that's why we're yeah, all kind of just kindness this. that's that's all that's all we operate on no doubt. And, you know, like I have my agency website and I have a personal website that I kind of push here locally. So that's perfect. I can, uh, yeah. I can put my, my funnel on both. I think I'll actually be doing a video for everyone. I'm going to walk through uh, setting up one of these funnel packs from downloading it to having it live on my website and see how long it takes me and see how easy it is. So keep an eye out for that. I'll try to do it in the next few days. So uh, if you're waiting on that, which uh, I don't know why you would, I'm sure everybody's at their checkout cart right now. Uh, but if you're waiting on that, um, you'll still have plenty of time before the discount code uh, runs out. So Matt, do you have any, Matt Siebert, do you have any more questions for Matt Davies while we're here? Um, reading through the comments now, just to see if anybody else had any, um, but it looks like we've covered pretty much everything. 
Monty actually said that I wasn't the king, I was the dunce. So <laughs> well, all, Oliver said that since he was second that he's the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Well, Matt, I certainly appreciate you coming on and debuting this pro project on the admin bar. I think this is our first uh, product debut right here on the show. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> Oh, it's been fun, isn't it? Um, just, just, just want to add as well. Um, I am going to make a, an email series where, if if this isn't for you for price or for anything else, that's absolutely fine. Um, but what I want people to understand is that it's okay uh, to reach out to other people if we're struggling in our business, whether it's a feast famine or roller coaster or anything else. It's absolutely okay. Reach out to people. There's groups like WP and Up run by Dan Maybe. Um, and there are people who will always listen to you. But just from a funnel alone, I'm going to have an email series. So if you don't have the budget for this or if it's not quite for you at the moment, um, I'll have an email series where you can just follow through and you can literally build a website, uh, a, a funnel for web audits. So again, my, my love of web audits, I'm going to end up getting tagged as web audits at some point. But um, I'll, I'll have that within the next week. And as I say, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll put a link in, in Kyle's group. But if this isn't for you right now, um, you're more than welcome to follow through that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm excited about that. And you're welcome to to uh, publish about funnel packs inside the group anytime. Me and me and uh, Matt have been talking about this, especially the last like two weeks as he's trying to ramp this up and get it ready to launch on today. I think Matt's going to go take a nap as soon as we're done with this because <laughs> he's been working for like five days straight, day or not, day and night. We we, we uh, yeah we we had a few bits that um, I, I had some videos to re-record and uh, a few bits that we needed to get right a few times and I know everything on there's not perfect at the moment um, but I, I think we've managed to explain what we're doing really well uh, we were working late last night <laughs> so uh, I was I was running through and testing everything I could so I think um, when going to bed sort of when the sun comes up. And then still being awake a few hours later. Anyway, you know, now it's definitely time for just a very short nap. Yeah, no doubt. So we do have one final question. Oh, uh, Monty yes. just asked. Uh, basically, are you able to uh, to kind of give us any idea of the the niches that you're thinking about bringing out? Oh yeah, it's it's on. It should be on the website. If you go to um, if you go to the website through Kyle's link, click on funnel packs in the admin link. Uh, so in in the navigation link, um, you've got the the three that we've got, which is the founder offer, the web design pack, and the website admin. I mean, I'll, I'll read them out. Uh, I'll f forgive me for not being uh, <laughs> my, my brain's a little bit frazzled today, but I'll read out what we've got at the moment. So we have this is just that we have plans at the moment without any input from anyone else. WordPress care plans white label services, e-commerce, SEO, pay-per-click, brand identity, copywriting, courses and membership sites, and that's going to be possibly split into two as well, email marketing, sales funnels or marketing funnels, social media marketing, speed optimization, uh, reviews, and I'll be helping your clients get reviews, after sales nurturing, so a funnel you can use after you've sold something, and then graphic design. That's what Perfect. we have planned at the moment. And I, I think, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I think what he might've been asking too is, uh, you know, you talked about phase two, being able to oh, sell these sorry. to clients and picking a few popular niches that would work. Do you have any of those niches in mind already, or you want to hold that off till we get closer to phase two after your nap? 99% of that will be driven by the, our customers. So what we plan to do is to poll the customers. We we do have a, a customer's uh, Facebook group. Um, I need to add a little bit more about that into the admin dashboard, I know, right now. Um, but we will be polling our customers first and foremost. So they will have the main input. Um, obviously, if the majority want a certain niche, then that's the one we'll go for. If it's very, very few and I can't quite build a pack on it or it doesn't make sense for us to do it, I'm still happily help out and see what I can do to give you advice towards that. That's not a problem, but um, we will try and do things for our clients first and foremost. Um, and if, as I say, if we end up building more niches, then again, I think user input is the best thing because there's no point in us building something that people don't need. Uh, we'll, we'll build what people want. Yeah. And I think there'll be plenty to choose from. I mean, I think, uh, if the the offer of having this on your own website isn't exciting enough, the fact that you might be able to just sell a pre-done funnel and look like a total hero is pretty badass. I'm super excited about this. I'm almost excited as you are about web audits. And to be able to put it all together <laughs> within an hour. And I mean, if you were to try to build this yourself, you're talking days. 
you know mm. like you're you're not just saving I, I think you're wrong about that i think we're talking i've had a funnel on my website for years now sure. that's not complete so we're talking it could take years to actually get off your ass and finish <laughs> this and and the hour thing i'm going to try to debunk because i mean i know my way around wordpress and elementor i'm going to see how quickly i can actually implement this and see if we can make that that hour like a half an hour <laughs> That's what I'm going for. In the um, in the admin dashboard, um, there's videos of me setting it up in Elementor and Beaver Builder, and in the aforementioned Mailchimp video, um, I I'm not a fan of Mailchimp, but it's free, and if it works for you, go for it. But um, if we add the times together on those, is roughly 44 to 47 minutes that I spent, and that was me talking slower because obviously I'm recording a video. Mm -hmm. um, if I talk to you in my normal friend speech, which I may have got a bit excited about during this video, I have to try and dial things back because you know you'd speak really really fast and everything gets exciting um in that time 44 to 47 minutes was about what we were getting there if you know your tools and you're not trying to show someone how to use it you can absolutely do it faster than that awesome. um, but as i say it has to be underneath an hour because that's exactly what i promised and that's what i said we deliver well that is awesome all right guys well i guess we will wrap this up for now matt davies is always around our group uh he won't be for the next few uh 24 hours while he sleeps <laughs> this one off uh, so give it a little bit of time, but reach out to him. If you have questions, uh, I'll be glad to answer anything I can about it. Uh, we got anything else to add fellas before we wrap this one up? I don't That's think so, but you know, if anybody does have any questions, uh, after this episode is aired, throw them in the, uh, you know, tag Matt in the, uh, the comments and I'm sure he'll, he'll get back to you. More than yeah. happy to. Absolutely. Thank you for me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, Thanks for coming on. I'm glad you're uh, glad you're finally here. And I'm looking, I already have some topics for some follow-up conversations. So uh, we'll keep those in mind and definitely have you back because I think this is going to be a huge success. And so don't forget about us when you're rich and famous. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Uh, I hope you and everyone who watched has a really awesome day and uh, all your businesses go really well today. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right, guys, as a reminder, if this group, this show helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us out is to share the content, subscribe to the podcast, or use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly supports the show. That is all for now, and we will catch you all inside the group. See you next time. That's even better. <laughs> be super distracting. That'll be perfect for me.